In this video, we use Solver to perform iterative nonlinear regression calculations using the maximum likelihood method and using both normal and Poisson distributions. For comparison, we will also use the spreadsheet to perform a standard least squares regression. For the data, we use a radioactive count of n against time with six experimental measurements and we aim to fit a best fit exponential decay for this data. So we have a total of six data pairs and we aim to fit an exponential decay with a decay constant k and an initial amplitude constant n0. We can start the iterative process by guessing initial values for these constants and we will guess 90 for the amplitude constant n0 and we will guess 0 0.4 for the decay constant. And then assuming these values for the exponential decay we will calculate the best fit values of n dash for each of the time values. So in cell D2 we will enter the amplitude constant which is in C9 and this will be multiplied by the exponential function in Excel and for the exponential decay we will have minus the decay constant multiplied by the value of time in B2. We aim to copy this formula to different rows but we wish to refer to the same constant values so in front of the row values for C9 and C10 we will put dollar signs to lock these values. With an amplitude constant n0 of 90 the best fit n dash value for t equals 0 will also be 90 but then as the time t increases we copy the formula down and we can see that the best fit n dash values decrease to follow the exponential decay. We will now derive iteratively best fit values for the amplitude and decay constants given that the uncertainty variation in the data is directed by a Poisson distribution. And for the first data value we will calculate the probability that an experimental value of 97 is observed given that the best fit value is 90. And this will be given by the Poisson distribution with the observed value in C2, the mean value of this distribution is then in D2 and we do not want the cumulative distribution, we want the individual probability value so we will enter false for cumulative so we get a probability of 0 0.0310 for observing a value of 97 when the Poisson mean is 90 and we can copy this calculation down to get the individual probabilities for each of the other data values. We then wish to get an overall probability by multiplying all of these together which requires the product function in Excel for all of these probabilities giving a combined probability of 9.8 times 10 to the minus 9 and to avoid any errors in Excel we will multiply this by a factor of 10 to the 6 giving a target objective value of this probability multiplied by 10 to the power 6. So this is our objective and we will use Solver to maximize this combined probability by changing the values of the amplitude and decay constant. So we go to data and then to solver. Our objective 
is in E10 and we want to maximize that value by changing the values in the cells C9 and C10. We can then run the solver analysis. We accept to keep the solver solution and we find that solver has found a value for the amplitude constant of 99.41 and the decay constant of 0.494 as values that give the largest probability of the observed data. So using the Poisson distribution, these values of the two constants generate our best fit exponential decay. We will now repeat this analysis, but now we will assume that the uncertainty in the experimental data is given by the normal distribution. But for this we need an estimate of the standard deviation of this random uncertainty and to do this we will calculate the residuals in the data. So taking the first data value, the residual is the difference between the experimental value and the best fit value and we need to get the squares of these residuals so this will be the value of G2 squared, which is up arrow 2. We can calculate these squared residual values for all of the data by highlighting these calculations and just copying them down. We now need to get the sum of all of the residuals using the simple sum function. We now need to calculate the standard error of regression, which is the best estimate of the uncertainty in each of the data values. And for that, we need to take the square root of the sums of squares and divide that by the degrees of freedom, the number of data values minus two, So we can use this as the standard deviation uncertainty in our normal calculation. So to calculate the probability of observing a value of 97 for the normal distribution, we will enter the normal distribution, the observed value which is in C2, the mean value of the distribution which is in D2, the standard deviation which we have now in H9 and we do not want the cumulative distribution so we enter false. We will put a dollar sign in front of the row for the standard error of regression so that stays locked to this value. So this gives a normal probability we can then copy that down to all of the data values. We can then calculate the combined probability by using the product function again. And again, we'll multiply by 10 to the 6 to develop a reasonably sized value. And we can now use solver again to maximize this value by changing values of the amplitude and decay constant for the exponential decay. So we go to data, solver. We are now looking at the data in F10, again to be maximized by changing the same cells. We run the analysis, okay. And now we get slightly different values. So by assuming a normal distribution uncertainty instead of the Poisson distribution uncertainty, we get slightly different values for the best fit exponential decay. And then finally, we can just do a least squares regression calculation. And to do this, we need to minimize the value of the total sums of squares. So in this case, we would use solver again, data, 
solver, our target is now the sums of residual squared in H8. But now we wish to minimize this value by changing the same data in C9, C10. So we can run this analysis and we find now that we get the same value, 97.86 for the amplitude constant and 0.476 for the decay constant as we did when we were using the maximum likelihood estimation with the normal distribution. However, this was to be expected because both of these last two methods assumed a normal distribution in the data and so gave us the same best fit exponential decay.